On April 24, NASA's Space Hubble Telescope turned 34 years old. Although it was not the first space telescope, Hubble is one of the largest and most versatile, renowned as a vital research tool and as a public relations boon for astronomy. So, to keep this great telescope healthy in space, NASA carried out periodic costly rescue missions aboard its retired space shuttle, but now they cannot do it anymore. The limited availability of reliable vehicles and budget forced the national agency to call for free help from private companies, especially SpaceX. In response, SpaceX has prepared everything needed for this critical future mission, including rockets, spacecraft, high-quality experts, and even spacesuits. And the recent publicity of SpaceX's EVA suit has demonstrated that their hardware is almost ready. Genius! SpaceX is launching the most important Dragon mission to rescue NASA Hubble. Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. The Hubble telescope is named after astronomer Edwin Hubble and is one of NASA's great observatories. Throughout its length of history and more than 1.6 million observations, this telescope sent back to Earth jaw-dropping images of the universe, expanding our understanding of space. In 1990, it was deployed by NASA's space shuttle to an altitude of 600 kilometers above the Earth's surface. That orbit has gradually decayed from atmospheric drag and is currently at about 535 kilometers. Continued decay creates a 50% probability that Hubble will re-enter by 2037. Of course, the gradual fall in space is not Hubble's only issue. Thanks to five previous space shuttle missions to service the telescope and boost its orbit, Hubble now remains healthy and continues to send new images back to Earth. However, the signals of aging on the telescope have still been alarming NASA, especially in the context that Hubble's lifespan has been extended to more than double the original target of 15 years. Take, for example, last November, NASA announced that Hubble was in safe mode because of a problem with one of its three operational gyroscopes. Given that, it provided what the space agency described as faulty readings. Gyroscopes are devices that measure the speed at which an object is turning. They are needed to help Hubble turn and lock onto new targets. Gyroscopes maintain orientation and provide stability in boats, aircraft, and spacecraft. The problem with the world's premier space observatory and the limited budget forced the space agency to call for free help from private companies. Under an unfunded Space Act agreement, NASA, SpaceX, along with billionaire private astronaut Jared Isaacman, have studied a concept to send a crew Dragon spacecraft to reboost and possibly service the Hubble Space Telescope to extend its life. The study was kicked off two years ago and could be the second phase of the private program the Polaris program. The baseline concept would involve a Crew Dragon spacecraft docking with Hubble, possibly using a capture mechanism installed on the last shuttle servicing mission in 2009 and raising its orbit back to its initial altitude of 600 kilometers. As a result, we would easily add 15 to perhaps 20 years of orbit life to the mission. The first of the trio of missions, Polaris Dawn will launch no earlier than summer 2024 and will take advantage of Falcon 9 and Dragon's maximum performance, flying to reach the highest Earth orbit ever flown, the Van Allen Radiation Belt. In there, the crew will attempt the first ever commercial extravehicular activity with SpaceX-designed extravehicular activity spacesuits upgraded from the current intrafecular suit. In the rescue mission, if there is a demand for spacewalks, Apparently, the astronauts can utilize SpaceX's new spacesuit. On May 4, SpaceX revealed the first renders of SpaceX EV a suit. At a glance, we can see clearly that SpaceX EV a suit looks much thinner and more comfortable than the bulky suit that the shuttle astronaut wore. It retains the same lines and trim fit as SpaceX's current IV a suit, which is a plus in a cramped capsule and doesn't require refitting astronaut couches. The suit is scalable so it can be cut to accommodate a large range of body types. It is also designed to be more sleek and become advanced than any modern spacesuit. The astronauts will certainly send huge thanks to SpaceX because of these great features. The suit upgrades contain material enhancements and joint improvements aimed at increasing astronauts' mobility while also protecting them from the cold, airless void outside their spacecraft. Referring to the material aspect, the manager of SpaceX's spacesuit team, Chris Drake, said, 
There was a lot of work on both the materials of the suit developing a whole new layer that we needed to add for thermal management, as well as looking at the thermal condition for the crew members themselves and making sure that they were at a comfortable temperature inside the suit. Amazingly, the SpaceX team also borrows the technology used in other parts of SpaceX's manufacturing gamut to create the suit. We have a lot of different resources at our disposal here, Drake said. There's some thermal material that we ended up using on the boot, which was developed actually for Falcon and Dragon, and is used on the interstage on Falcon and on the trunk of Dragon. The suit's fabric is made from fire-resistant materials like Nomex and Teflon, with specialized woven layers borrowed from the Falcon's interstage and Dragon's trunk, providing insulation against the harsh temperature extremes of space. Furthermore, mobility and dexterity, while the suit is pressurized, are a big focus throughout the development. Indeed, the Starship team added rotating bearings at the shoulder, allowing the astronauts to move their arms up and down. Additionally, Drake described a new heads-up display in the helmet design, allowing astronauts to view data about their suit's internal temperature, humidity, and pressure. The display also exhibits a mission clock to monitor the durations of particular EVA tasks. Aesthetically, it may look similar to the IVA, but what they did under the hood is extraordinary, said Jared Isaacman, mission commander for Polaris Dawn during the discussion. The 3D printed helmet has a new copper and indium tin oxide coated visor that can handle solar glare. A camera is equipped with a couple of the suits to send what they actually see back to Earth. One more interesting tidbit, the pressure inside the suit is 5.1 pound force per square inch or PSI one third atmosphere. This plays a vital role in minimizing the risk of depressurization incidents. During the upcoming mission this summer, all crew members will be wearing SpaceX's new EVA suit, giving them the opportunity to put it to the ultimate test. That's because the Crew Dragon doesn't have an airlock, which means the entire cabin has to be depressurized. We'll vent the cabin down to vacuum, and then we will undertake an EVA operation where we hope to learn an awful lot about our suits and the operation associated with it, Isaac Mann said. But considering it's the first spacewalk of its kind involving a new suit that was redesigned from the ground up, it's a big step for the Elon Musk-led venture. It could potentially pave the way for future private spacewalks like it, the Polaris's second phase to rescue NASA's Hubble, for example. Among the list of private firms ready to help NASA in the rescue mission this time, besides SpaceX, there are two space startups, California's Momentous Space and the Tokyo-based Astroscale. Both have announced they're willing to collaborate on a potential future servicing mission to shift the Hubble Space Telescope into a safer orbit and remove any debris that could collide with the probe. They sent a proposal to NASA after the agency issued a request for information in December 2022 regarding the SpaceX study. Their plan goes a little something like this. A non-crewed rocket would launch a water-propelled space tug thruster into low Earth orbit which would then drag the Hubble up by some 50 kilometers. Then, after undocking, it'd remove any space junk that could mess with the telescope's new orbit. Nevertheless, the currently untested and unproven nature of the startup's uncrewed and water-powered plan may well give NASA pause, especially considering that SpaceX has a substantial track record of pulling off tasks for the agency. But the company's plan's novelty may, per a statement from the president of Astroscale's American operation, be the key selling point. What we've proposed to NASA are options, Ron Lopez, the president and managing director of Astroscale said in the statement. Anyway, diversity and choice is really what NASA exactly strives for in all of its projects involving commercial companies. But of course, in the urgent case, SpaceX is always its priority. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you and we look forward to seeing you next time